Let's talk about lab exercise fourteen. So since we talk about how to use the invoke directive, so we will re-implement the factorial procedure using the invoke directive. So you can refer to the sample source file we have from the last week. So in the source file factorial.asm file we used last week, we have two procedure. One factorial we using the recursive procedure. Then we have the factorial loop procedure. We using a for loop to find the factorial value. But both procedure actually we don't have a parameter list. Ah,、uh, did you remember before we using the push before we call factorial? So that's why you will see here from the. Example. So in the factorial example, okay. So we have the factorial dot asm file. So in here, remember we using two procedure, but both procedure we don't have the parameter list. So that's why, for example, in the recursion factorial function, we do the push pop ebp manually. So before you need to call this factorial procedure, you need to push the number the factorial you want to find. Then you call the factorial procedure. So that's why they can calculate then return your result. So that's before we never talk about how to add the parameter list, but now we know how to add the parameter list after the PROC directive, right? So that's why now actually for both the factorial and the factorial loop procedure, you will have one parameter. So that will be the n factorial, the number you want to looking for the factorial. So the same thing, you will return the n factorial from the EAX. So you need to make the change accordingly, because now your new procedure, they both can using the PROC to add their parameter list. So after you can add the parameter list, your procedure content, you need to make the co、um, corresponding change as well. You have no more push and pop EBP. So then you need to using the invoke directive in the main to call both procedure and display the output in the console. So I want you to have your procedure definition after your main function. So that's why you need to include the procedure prototype. So that's why we can practice the PR, on、uh, the proto PR OTO directive. So your result still the same thing. They are in EAX. However, before when we use this procedure in the factorial, we didn't check the result. So then you can see when you do the five factorial, you see they print one twenty, but we enter forty factorial. If you try that, actually the result becomes zero. So how come they become zero? So that's why I want you to also besides you make the change using the invoke directive and the portal. I want you to also update your procedure content to check, because supposedly in the factorial we use the mod operator, so that's why after you multiply a double word value, actually your product will be in EAX with EDX, but since we only return EAX, and also one thing be careful as long as your EDX you also need that. That means your EAX actually is not along with the value, so that's why since we only using the EAX to display, so then whenever the EAX is overflow, you should just display the error message in the console. So for example, we see here, when we try to find ten factorial, yeah, we do have the value, but if you make the change in your procedure. If after your multiplication operation, remember if the EDX value have the carryover, 
your either carry flag or overflow flag will be set. Right, so then you just need to check that flag status. So if the status flag is set, so then you don't have to print your result because the EAX already overflow, even you have the result, they are not correct. So then here, if you want to looking for the 15 factorial, then we just display the factorial value is overflowed. Okay, so that's your example on uh, lab exercise 14. So I want you to update from the factorial.asm file, make the change. So then here is the sample output you can check.